But the point is, if you look at not just the new atheist movement, but the Shubuhat, the doubts that people, young people, are given by the dominant ethic and the population is to do with women's rights in Islam. It's to do with the hudud, the, the, the punishments, all of these kinds of things. And what's that got to do with atheism? Nothing. There is, and this is important, it's going to sound a bit technical, but let me just break it down for you. There is no necessary link between atheism and liberalism. Liberalism is an ideology which can be described through the harm principle. That you can do whatever you want so long as you don't harm anyone else, which is why they believe in homosexuality. Nowadays, they say a man and a man, they can do what they want, leave them alone. And you say to them, why? They say, because so long as they're not harming anyone else, why are you getting involved in their business? I'm sorry to say, I say, what about a brother and a sister? I know there's young people here. They say, no, it's not the same. I say, why not? It's the same principle. But it's, they don't want to be consistent with it. They realize the implications. But the point is, most of the shubuhat, the doubts, the doubts that they have are from this paradigm. They're coming from this. Or a second wave feminist paradigm. And the second wave feminist paradigm says that men and women should be equal in every single thing. I was reading a book called The Communist Manifesto. Written by a woman called, uh, I forget her first name, but her surname is Ngozi. She's Nigerian. She's not that bad, actually, to be honest. She made a very famous speech. She wrote a book called The Feminist Manifesto. And in that book called The Feminist Manifesto, she said that men and women should be, there should be absolute equality between men and women in everything except for breastfeeding. Because why? Because it's impossible, Yanni. It's impossible to do breastfeeding, Yanni, as a man. Although now they're trying to like create prosthetic breasts and this and that. Unfortunately, some of our men have their own set of breasts and all that already. But there's no milk in them. The point is, it's, it's, it's impossible. So she said, you know, that's, that is what it is. The, the, the question we should be asking, and no, before I say the question we should be asking, is I will say, with that paradigm, with that understanding, that okay, men and women should be equal. Now the Muslim in Ramadan is reading the Quran, he's the first day, second day, third day, and the fourth day is reading Surah An-Nisa. You'll see, Allahu fi awladikum, mithlu hazirun sayyim. That, you know, for the, yani, the, the man, the boy has twice the amount of inheritance as the girl. And this is only in the case of brother and sister, by the way. This, yani, it's a long story. But brothers get twice as much as sisters. Otherwise, otherwise, the mother and the father get the same. Man. Anyway, long story. They'll say, they'll say something to the effect of, well, that goes against the principle I've learned, which is what? There should be equality between men and women. Therefore, and the for Allah, that's what they think. Therefore, the Quran is wrong. That's what they think. Why? Because what is right is that men and women should be treated equally and the same. The Quran is saying there should be disparity. Therefore, the Quran is wrong. But they don't say that, they think it. And this is where it's, it's called shak. When you have doubts, severe doubts in the religion of Islam. And then they start developing real problems in their faith and pain and all kinds of problems. But why? It's because they have what you call capitulated. They have given up to the assumption. The assumption being that men and women should be the same in all cases. But this is a false assumption, or at least an unsubstantiated assumption. This assumption itself cannot be proven. You know, Plato famously, Aristotle claims, in fact, Aristotle is Plato's student, he says like things should be treated the same thing, uh, like should be treated for like. Meaning the different things should be treated differently. Different things should be treated differently. You go, what year are you in, brother? Nine. You're nine. And what year are you, a young man? Year two. Now imagine if you were in class and I gave you the same work to do. I'm sure he's clever, but he's not that, maybe not that clever. <laughs> well, what year are you in, brother? Nine. You're nine as well. But I think you'd still struggle if I gave you the same work. I'm only joking. <laughs> I'm, only, I'm only kidding. The, the same thing is, we even have sets. You go to a school. I'm only kidding, bro. You know, I don't, I'm just playing. You go to school and they have sets. Set one, set two, set three. You know, and they make a special set for this brother here. <laughs> <laughs> and they make sets because you can't treat this. It's, this is not equity. Like, you know, you go on the bus. Yeah? Go on the bus. 
And you know, you see this kind of thing that comes down for the wheelchair. Why do you think they put it there? I, have, you, have you ever seen a situation where someone is using it, like a person in a wheelchair, and then someone comes out and says, that's not fair. <laughs> why, are you, why are you bringing the ramp out for him and not for me? Have you ever seen that situation? Why? Because we all, it's almost intuitive. We know that this person needs a bit of help because they're disabled. Okay, so this person has something different to this person and we cater for it. No, no problem. No problem. How about this one? How about, they say they want, they want equality of outcome and equality of opportunity. Both are false, by the way. Both are absolutely false. Let me give you an example of uh, uh, equality of, not just outcome, opportunity being false. Going back to a bus, like a double-decker bus. You don't have double-deckers here, do you? You don't need them. <laughs> you have a double-decker bus, okay. So I apply, so, you know, you apply, how old are you? You don't have a driving license. Next year, the year is 17, right? You can get a, and then a blind man applies. A blind man applies to be a bus driver. Is, and they have, let's say, they, they, he became blind thereafter. He's got all the qualifications that are required. And then he gets called into the interview. And he says, I have, to have, I have a secret to tell you. He, you know, I'm blind. Or I'm, I'm, I can't see with this eye or I have problem with my vision. Should he get the job? No, he shouldn't get the job. Of course not. But, but isn't this against equality of uh, opportunity? Yes, it is. A, of course, it is against. We're not even giving you an opportunity because if you have a job, you're going to cause problems for the people. They, they say we are born equal. Have you heard this? It's in their founding father. Uh, the founding fathers of liberalism say we're all born equal. We're born equal. How are we born equal? Have you seen the height disparity between me and him? <laughs> <laughs> what equality are we talking about here? I make up for it intellectually. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, mashallah. You see? Born equal? I've got, I've got grey hair at the age of 30. Actually, you've got some grey hair as well. I'm, I'm picking up, I'm bullying you now. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> I have to choose someone else, another victim. So this man over there is... Is, is receding hairline like me as well. I mean, this is with the same age. What the hell is going? There's no equality here. What equality? What equality? Sorry, what, what are you talking? What, what do you mean by equality? Has everyone, has anyone dared ask that question? We're scared to ask that question. We believe in equality. What you, okay. What do you mean by it? Because we're not the same in height and age and color. Even in opportunities. I'm, I'm born in one place of the world. This guy's born somewhere else. Not everyone gets the opportunity to be a great, spokesperson and a great intellectual like Maulana because he's gotten certain opportunities by going to Turkey, by going to this country, by going to that country, got use university. Not everyone has that opportunity. Someone lives in a village, he has no such opportunity. They might have the potential, but they don't have the opportunity. So there's no equality because where he's born and he's born is different. We're not saying we don't believe in equality. We believe in equality of value, but not identicality of roles. We believe in equality of value that if a Muslim man and a Muslim woman, they do the same thing, they fast, they pray, and all that kind of thing, they deserve to, they're equal in the sight of Allah. A black man, he does something, a white man, they're equal in the sight of Allah, of course. We don't believe in that kind of hierarchy. But we don't believe in, okay, that we have to now forge a situation where we create equality everywhere, and we pretend there's no differences between men and women. It's nonsense. No difference between, they did this in uh, in America, they were trying to get people to become firefighters, you know, and obviously women are slower than men, average, weaker than men, I'm sorry to you, <laughs> they've also got good things, you know, I'm, I'm just, uh, <laughs> honestly, I mean, th that's the truth, I mean, they, statistically, they've got abil ability to do more than one thing at one time, like multitasking, I know that's very cliche, I understand. But there are things, we are obviously, and they're nurturing, more nurturing than we are. So I had to do two for two, just to go along with the discourse, you know. And they can give birth. And I know that sounds like, oh, so what? No, no, seriously. So the, the only reason why it sounds like ridiculous is because the feminists have rubbished the institution of 
motherhood and marriage. Oh, a woman can give birth. So what? Yeah, that's no, no, it's a big deal, you know. Have you ever seen a woman give birth? I have to see it three times. Well, I saw it with my own three children and my own kids, just in case. <laughs> I mean, you know. But what I'm saying to you is this. That where there's differences and they're continual differences is a, continu a continuity which exists within women. That, and there's a continuity, a collective temperamental continuity which exists within men. Then there should be, for there to be equity, there should be some kind of tailoring of that for that. And we believe Islam provides it. Which is why jihad is mandatory for men. And it's not mandatory for women. Fighting, defending the lands and all these kinds of things. There are some things which are mandatory for women that are not mandatory for men. Like, for example, the hijab. I mean, we have our own thing that we have to cover. But it's nothing like men. Oh, why? Oh, is it because why do we have to cover for the weakness of men? Why not? Why not? I don't understand. Men can cover for the weakness of women. Where they need a fight, a help, a hand and a fight. And they're firefighting. Where men are better. And women can fight. Help for the weakness of men. We can help for each other's weakness. We believe in a complementarity. We believe in... The relationship of symbiotic complementarity, meaning which is we help each other, we cover for each other. My weakness is your strength. Your strength is my weakness. What's the problem? You guys watch football, yeah? Who watch football? Maybe cricket. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> well, what do you want? Football, yeah? You know, you have a goalkeeper, don't you? You have a goalkeeper, you have a striker, yeah? You have a midfielder. You play football as well? Okay. You play football? Who plays? Put your hand up to play football. You. Which one? Okay, yeah. What's your position? Goalkeeper. It's very important. Imagine a football match without a goalkeeper. I'm left back, actually. Left back on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> How can I say? So we have a situation like that. We have a situation where if you, you need every, everyone knows their role. No one says, well, how come he gets to score all the goals? Oh, we need a defender. We need a goalkeeper. In economics, they call it the law of comparative advantage. You can help me out. He's an economic expert. I have, to, I have to praise everyone here today. Just to return a compliment. This guy well, like, came to Sapiens last week, and he was, you know, he was hammering this Marxist. He's actually the, the head of the <laughs> Communist Party. I was so shocked. So this because he comes across as very you know but then he, he, he i saw this lion in him a, he, the, 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 the communist was quaking in his boots <laughs> so that's why in an economy you need different things specialisms right everyone's a specialist you have a fbi agent you have you know cid agent and if you're pakistani you have a news agent <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm only kidding, guys. But you see, this, that, so the assumption of equality, you like that one, huh? You know, it's just it's the, it's the style, it's the wit, it's the eloquence. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> no, 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 but that's the point, you see. So we believe in specialism, we believe in difference. We don't agree with the assumption. Do you know, in, in English, I used to teach English in schools, by the way. And history as well. Before I got fired, <laughs> I got fired for for some political activity. Um, and what I was going to say was, we used to do something called PEA or PEE. You guys might have it. Point, example, explanation. Do you remember this? So I'm trying to ta tailor the thing for the for the youngsters, okay? Because I know we can't both be talking high theology, right? <laughs> Marshall. PEE. -E. But when someone asks you a question, just remember something, yeah? This is what I actually use. The first thing you do, if someone asks you any question, the framework I use is the APECA. -E I know this might sound like long winded. A APECA. APECA, yeah? So it's not just PEA -E or PEE, -E, it's APECA. So how does it work? The first thing you do is you question the assumptions, A for assumptions. You can put this down if you like, it's no problem. This might be the only thing I actually give you of, of utility today. Someone speaks to you and they say, well, why is it that your religion says that a man can marry four wives? I don't know why I keep using this example in particular. It's like I'm a, yeah, my religion. Or that a man can marry a Christian and a woman cannot marry a Christian. This is in the Quran, right? So why is it that the Quran discriminates against women in this way? How would anyone here answer this question? 
before you tell me, let me give you the framework, all right? The first thing you do is A for assumption. So every question has an assumption. What is the assumption of this question? If I ask you, why is it that a man can marry four and a woman can't? What is the assum a possible assumption of this question? Yeah. So that, that it may that that's aberrational, anti-normative, or wrong even, or that it's that there should be equality. There should be an equality to begin with between men and women in all cases. If you don't question the assumption, you lose the argument. Full stop. You lose it. If you say, oh, because this, but women are given rights elsewhere, whatever answer you give, if you do not question the assumption of the shubha, and the assumption always goes back, like 95% of the time, to either feminism or liberalism. Okay? The assumption will go back to those two things. So you can, you can put it in your mind like that. Yes, any shubha, any misconception anybody has, it goes back to feminism or liberalism. Not atheism. Atheism has nothing to offer. Atheism is an empty barrel. Atheism is nothing. As, as the sheikh, he said, he said correctly, or the maulana, he said correctly, wallahi, this is a very good point. He said, uh, agnostics, he said that it's like saying I'm jahil. They're saying I don't know. So if you don't know, why are you asking me any question? You don't know anything. Imagine someone who says I don't know, and then he's telling you what to believe in. If you get, what do you believe? I'm an agnostic. So why is it that your religion says this? Well, you, you said you don't know. <laughs> so why are you so certain about something, you know? If you're an agnost, if you're atheist, you, you don't actually have, by necessity, any moral stance. You can, you, can be an, you can be an atheistic fascist, Nazi. It's true. They're not incompatible. So, atheism is not the issue here. The head of the snake, there's two heads. If there were two heads, it would be second wave feminism and liberalism. And if there was one of the two, it would be liberalism. You need to know what this ideology is. So, the assumption is that there should be an equality between men and women. And that there's that identi uh, identicality in value or equality of value equals identicality in roles. That like things should be treated the same. That's the assumption. <coughs> now, how do we deal with that assumption? We say, you prove it now. That's your assumption. You see how easy that was? It's like you're playing tennis. He, he bats a ball to you and you get you freak out. You just bat it back. Now he has to bat it to you. In other words, now you say to him what? You say to him, what's your proof? One question, simple. What's your proof? that men and women should be treated equally in all cases. And whatever they say back, you say, whatever they say, you just say, look, is that on an objective level? So you're saying whatever you've just said there explains that men and women should be treated equally objectively. Yani meaning the same level as 2 plus 2 equals 4. The same level as that. And if they say yes, then you can just say you're wrong and explain why not. But it's impossible for them to prove that assumption. So the first thing in the in the in the framework was A for a, for the framework is a pecker, by the way, yeah. A is assumption. Then P is now you make your point, like P E A or P E E. You make your own point, and then E is what? No, before that, example. So you bring some stats, you bring some points. You, you, you must make sure you use this in school. Yeah, very good, very good framework. So you say assumption, point. E evidence or uh, uh, example, give some example. Now the C stands for counterexample. Some may say, and you think, what would they say back to you? This will work everywhere, except for in marriage. <laughs> I've tried it, I have, well I, but for nine years I've been trying. <laughs> Why didn't you do this and that? Well, the assumption is, <laughs> <laughs> I tried it. You can't win a logical argument with your spouse. Just the moment you've argued with your spouse, you've lost. And no, there's been times where I really, I think I, like in my mind, I won. Like I, I won. If there was a crowd, they would be cheering for me. Be, but <laughs> wallahi, yeah. wallahi. However, I look to my left and she's like, you know, not in a very good mood. <laughs> I say, what have I really won now? <laughs> No one, I get no money from this. <laughs> I get no web from this. I get nothing from this. So don't, you know, don't do this with your parents either. You have to be good with your parents. And you have to be good with the elders of your community because they're the ones who, their hard sweat, blood and tears allowed us to be here in the first place. 
So you can't be messing around. They're using these kind of things to go and attack you, your, your parents and elders. But A, P, E, C is for counterexample, and then A is analysis, which is like explanation. Yeah, it's like PEE. -E. And if you have a framework always in mind, someone asks you any question, assumption. Okay, the assumption is X, Y, Z. Then the point you make, then believe me, they will never win.